OER video tutorial on agent-based models, part one. What we're going to do is we're going to pay attention to the COVID-19 scenario, but agent-based models are very interesting models because they can be allowed to create all kinds of complexities. So the difference between what we were looking at before, which were population-based models, these are more individual-based models. So when you think about these, models that's why they're called agent based they're individual based so each person is an agent and each agent or each person uh person slash agent has properties that govern its behavior okay or properties and they also have behaviors and they have parameters for each so uh, they have parameters for each person and a parameter might just be their age uh, has our attributes, attri I'll call them parameters and attributes. And these become really handy because what you can do is then they can have behavior and you can watch their behavior. Uh, so you want the agents slash individuals to have behavior and you watch these behaviors. Okay. And that's basically what it boils down to is they have some parameters, they have some attributes, and what we do is we model each person individually instead of looking at the entire population. Because that's what we did before. We said, okay, there's a rate of people moving from this bin to this bin and to this bin to this bin. What we're going to do is we're actually going to model each and every person, and then we'll aggregate up the answer. Okay, and that'll be a couple videos ahead. But first, what we're going to do is just get you to understand what it is. So the first thing we need to do is get an agent. So I'm going to call it Agent 1. And it's just going to be, I'm going to start off simple. You can make these as complicated as possible. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a data frame. And each, per, each row is going to tell me about that agent. So first thing I'm going to do is get Agent Number. So that I have a number uh, for each agent so I could go back and look at them. So I'm going to call this Agent Number 1. And I am going to give them... Uh, a state, uh, which is, in our case, we've been playing with the uh, COVID-19 data, so we'll say this person is susceptible. They're not exposed. And what we'll do is we'll give them one other attribute, which is what I call mixing. Okay, it's basically how do they play with other people. Okay, so here we're going to say our mixing parameter is going to be how much do they socialize with other people. So zero, near zero would be they don't socialize with people. One, they crave socialization, and they're incredibly likely to mix with other people. And as we go along, we're going to make these agents more and more complicated. But right now, we need to stay with the simplest possible. Because once you see how the agent-based methods work, you'll realize that you want to start small and add complexity. You don't want to start complex and then try to figure everything out afterwards all right so we've got this set up now what we're going to do is we're going to create a group or a population so create a population of agents okay and it's basically doing the same thing but we're going to do this in a for loop so we need to know i in one to however many agents so we're going to do n pop here and I need to define that. How big is my population? How many of these agents are there going to be? So n pop 1 here is going to be, let's just say 10. So we can look at them. Right now we want to just play with a small number so we can see what happens. Now we're actually going to have uh, more than that. But I'm just going to actually go to 2 to this number. That way it makes more sense because I already defined agent number 1 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to call him Agent 2. Right now, his number is going to be associated with I. Okay, so whatever index we're on, that's going to be his number. And we're going to say that all of these will be susceptible right now. We'll talk about how to randomly make them something else later. And what we're going to do is we're just going to simply R bind this. So Agent 1 is going to be R bind Agent 1 with Agent 2. So each time we're going to come through here, we're going to add another agent onto the list. 
All right, so if I did this, then I can look at my agents and we can quickly discuss them before we move too much farther. All right, so I've got in here my data frame. And this I know this will be hard to read on the video, but uh, let's see. Can I zoom in on this? Probably not. Um, so here, this person has a very high mixing parameter. So let me move it over here so where we can really see it. So agent one. Okay, now we can see these values. This person has a very high mixing parameter, very likely to mix with other people. This one's very high. And let's see, most of these are very high, even though we randomly generated them. And if we were to run this again, what we just had, we'll get a different group of people or agents. This person is a recluse. They don't really like interacting with people in this population. And then I have some other people who do like to interact. Okay, so that's sort of what we're trying to do. Here's the state they're in, and we have some attribute about them, which is how much they like to mix. Now, we can play with this, and you can do all kinds of stuff with it, but we're just trying to keep it simple right now. So now that we've defined our agents, what we need to do is determine how they behave. Now that we have their properties, how do they behave, and how does that cause their state or whatever we're interested in, their attributes, to change. All right, so we'll do that, start that in the next video, and I'll see you there.